In today's video, I want to share with you five examples of my personal experience of how my life took care of me, okay? Times where I had no idea what was coming next or how things would work out or be okay. But, you know, the way that circumstances unfolded in factors that I personally could not have controlled, that everything came together and took care of me, of little old me, this personality, okay? So I'm going to discuss the five examples, but afterwards I'm going to discuss the lessons that I learned from them, which is really what is more important. The five examples that I'm going to share with you are just circumstantial examples. That is not what is significant. What is significant is the lesson you will extract from what occurred. That is always the key. Okay, so if anything, um, if you only watch a little bit of this video, watch the next half rather than this, because that will actually give you insight into how to deal with this in your own experience. So if you actually watch this video till the end, I'm sure that you will be more at ease with your experience as it is and be okay with the uncertainty, you know, of the future. So I'll share all these examples in chronological order as they happen in my experience. Okay, so the first of them being uh, when I was in high school and um, I've shared on this channel before that during those years I was going through a very, very difficult time. I was going through an illness which was, um, you know, from a spine injury through which was, you know, I was really going through a couple of years of just pain, just constant pain all day, every day. And it was a very, very difficult time for me just going from doctor to doctor and, you know, hearing disappointing news and almost like giving up on my healing journey. And it was, it was a very, very difficult time at that time, and I was deeply suffering. Um, and to a point where I really had given up, and I was like, you know, there's no avenue through which I can see healing, you know, happening, or me getting better, in a way. And I remember when I was just about to graduate high school, so all my high school graduation, I remember we, we were all, because it was an outdoors graduation in our new stadium or whatever, so we were given extra tickets. And my family friends, just happened to come like family friends who would never really have been invited to the graduation itself and a family friend of that family friend so you see how far this goes a family friend of the family friend who was not even supposed to come to my graduation was also there so the family friend was visiting my other family friend okay and they both just happened to be my at my graduation because my uncle had invited them and the, the further off family friend, right, was also from a different state who I had never met, who my, my, most of my family had never met. And he just happened to be a healer. He just happened to be, um, you know, working in Ayurveda. And that was actually my introduction to him. And it is from him where I really got introduced to, to the whole field of spirituality, Ayurveda, natural healing. And it is from him where I, my natural healing process actually started. And that he was the catalyst and I would have never, in, you know, and at that time I was very, very, you know, scientific, very, very doubtful, uh, not spiritual at all. So, it's, so just think of how crazy and out of my control it is, how he came into my experience and how he opened me up to the, the red next chapter, the avenue, which, you know, that I never would, uh, the field that I would have never expected myself to get into. So that, that, that was, that, that I always look at it as a complete blessing, a complete unexpected blessing that I could have never expected of life even. Again, what I learned from this, I will share very, very soon towards the end of the video. But that brings us to my second example. So this is when I was actually going to college and uh, I went to college at the University of Buffalo. So it's in Buffalo, if you don't know, if you're not from the United States, it snows a lot, okay? So I remember this was like, it was about to be spring break and I was, or it was, I think, like winter break or something. And I was about to drive back home. Um, and my dad was telling me to just wait another day because there was going to be a huge snowstorm that day. But I didn't listen. And I was driving back with my friend. And, you know, the snow was getting very, very bad. And um, some for some reason, the GPS took me off road, like uh, to the inner streets off the main highway. And here it was literally stranded i saw no cars because you know it was a snowstorm so everybody was home and i was just in the inner streets it was just complete open you know these like farmhouses and everything and 
it was snowing so much to the point where we could barely see anything. And at this point, I was getting worried. Me, my, me and my friend were getting worried. And um, I remember there was a huge gust of wind and it blew all the snow, you know, everywhere to the point where I could not see anything anymore. And it was literally like, it's pretty scary actually to be in a car where you don't know anywhere that you're going. So I just pressed the brake. And um, as soon as the, the, the thing of wind left, I could see a little bit, I tried to go, but my car was completely stuck in snow now. And now I was getting nervous because I was like, damn, how to get out of this one? We're probably just gonna have to ditch the car and like go somewhere because before we get snowed in. And it is the craziest thing, not even lying, I just see someone in the in my rear view mirror, this man come out of nowhere, like literally emerging out of nowhere. And, you know, he just he just quickly asked me if I, I was stuck and he just went to the back of the car and literally pushed me out of, of all that snow and, and just said, keep going. And I'm telling you, he came out of nowhere because it was a completely stranded area and just disappeared back into nothingness. Now, I didn't, I didn't see him where he went, but like, it, it, it was so unexpected. And it was, you know, he just got me out of the snow and we went and that's it. And it, it was a time where I was truly like, wow, like that was straight up protection right there. Now, the third example is when things started to, you know, get a little more um, serious in my life. Um, later in college, when I really came across a lot of these self-help teachings, okay, it really lit up a fire in me and I started to see that I no longer wanted to work in finance. Um, so I was interning in finance at that time, right? I was still going to college. And um, that's when I realized that, you know, like I want to find my passion. I'm no longer going to be doing things that I don't want to do. Um, I'm no longer going to live a life that I don't want to live. I want to create um, the, so this is the beginning of my empowerment journey. And I remember I wanted to find my passion but I had no idea what it was. I just knew that I had a passion for self-betterment and self-development. And um, what I was really inspired to do at that time was to just, I just wanted to travel alone. I wanted to get away from everything. Um, but that required me to, number one, quit my summer internship in that finance um, company. And two, it was gonna cost a lot of money. And at that time I was just a college kid. And I think I had around $10,000 saved up. And I literally spent pretty much all that money for that duration of the, uh, of the period. So I just, I'd spent about $10,000 or $12,000 or so on a whole summer of just traveling alone. So it was also scary for me because I had never traveled alone before, especially for that much time. But it was just something that I was really inspired to do. And um, you know, it's not that I was just traveling and having fun during that time. I literally used every single day to read, to meditate, to just spend time in isolation and to work just to write, just to do the only thing that I'm, I was actually passionate about that at that time. And I know this may not sound anything like it's, it's um, a crazy thing to do, but it was a big leap of faith at, at that time for me. You don't understand, I was a very, very, um, like before I was a very shy kid, I was, I was not at all courageous, I was very self-critical. So this was a huge, this was the, one of the first big leaps of faith that I ever took on myself. And that was actually the beginning of me recognizing, you know, that I want to start blogging or I wanted to start making videos. And that trip itself ended up being the, the starting point for this life that I'm living now. So being on that trip, you know, I remember just day by day me working towards it and just the next step kept presenting itself to me. You know, the idea to start a blog, the idea to start writing, the idea to create this and then that and then this, recognizing the process that I'm going to have to go through to create, you know, um, it's like an online business, which I still didn't know fully what I was going to do. But the, the ideas kept presenting themselves to me. So this was like life kind of taking care of me, allowing me to go through the process of becoming who I needed to become, to experience what I needed to experience to be here. And now number four, um, after this summer trip, I had one semester left in college because I graduated in mid-year, okay? So I had one semester left in college and now came time to take a bigger leap of faith. So it was this time where all my friends were, you know, applying to jobs, getting their offers and everything like that. And I could have certainly went that traditional route as well. I could have just worked in finance. My degree was finance. And that is when, you know, 
I knew that I had to do this. I had to take a leap of faith on myself. So I didn't apply to any jobs out of college. I went straight for just the path of I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to build um, an online business doing what I want to do. And at that time, again, I barely knew what I wanted to do, but I was like, I will figure it out and life will come, you know, to my rescue. I had read all these things and, you know, again, reading is just one thing, but taking a leap of faith on yourself and applying them and giving it your all and putting yourself on the deep end is what actually turns this intellectual information into experiential knowledge, into knowing. And so when I started, when I started this business, trust me, I had no idea anything about online business. I had no confidence. I had little to no skill. I barely know, knew how to spoke. And you can see that if you go watch my first ever video on YouTube, you'll see that, you know, like I had barely even knew how to speak. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even too good socially. So the skills, the people that I needed, the resources that I needed, the ideas just kept unfolding day to day to day to day as long as I maintain my faith. The more I took a leap of faith on myself, not knowing how the next thing would turn out, the more this freedom actually made itself available to me. And you will experience the same thing in your life as well, but you know, we'll, we'll discuss the lessons from this later on. But the example that I wanna give here, right, is like, I took a, that was the biggest leap of faith I still have ever taken in my life, even more than the, the, the trip to travel alone for a couple of months, right? And it took a while to really get this thing going, just like with anything. It, it does take a while. And, and, you know, for a year or a year and a half or so, I really had to have just faith, just working on faith day by day, just doing what I enjoy. But over time, you know, that, that became the foundation for what I'm doing today. Today, I, I can truly say that I'm, I'm living a life of personal freedom. Like, I, I'm completely okay financially. I'm doing what I love every single day. I've cut out all the nonsense from my life. Anywhere I do not want my energy going. Are there still obstacles? Are there still things, you know, that are inconvenient? Yes, they are. And that's the nature of physical experience. However, I, you know, like life itself, like what it has turned into is an expression of freedom. The freedom that I know myself to be. The freedom that I experience within. So that, that you know, taking that big leap of faith back then when I was just graduating, when it was totally not socially acceptable to do so, when nobody believed in me, when I barely believed in me, but I, what I did believe in was a greater power than me. That itself is what came to my rescue. That itself is what brought me all the personal and worldly resources that I needed, that this person needed in order to create the life that they wanted. Now, the last example I'll give to you is um, last year, um, pretty much almost like a, exactly a year ago, when I was just kind of sitting on my couch, you know, um, and I just, out of nowhere, for real, out of nowhere, just got inspired to like look up the words self-realization retreat. I, I barely even knew what self-realization really meant at that time. But I just looked up self-realization retreat and I came across this retreat that really intrigued my interest and it was in California. And literally that day I booked it. Um, and it is on that retreat where I really came across the teachings of Sri Ramana Maharshi. Um, and that is what set the foundation for what this channel and what this, this like you know, this entire endeavor, uh, my entire coaching program, my entire YouTube channel, that is what it is about today. Um, these teachings, you know, the shift from, you know, the empowerment teachings to this. At that time, like that, that plan, that uh, move could not have been planned because this was something that was not even known by me. It was not even something that I ever considered to do. Whereas l just that I instinct to just, you know, want to look this up and just feeling good about it and booking it again, taking another leap of faith, you know, and just going. And, and that, that trip itself, enriching my life in this way. And, and, and 
moving my experience in an avenue which I could have never expected or wanted even. That itself is, is life in motion, life taking care of life. So, so let me now you know, get into the actual uh, lessons that I learned from just these circumstantial experiences, okay? Number one of which, so number one lesson is there is no need to figure out the next step in your journey. You understand? We constantly stress and worry because we don't know what's coming next and we believe that we have to create the next step and the next step. And we believe that this person is responsible for the next step. But this is not true. Life itself is going to present to you the next step. All you need to do is just be at ease with what you are right now. Be at ease with how life is right now. And just stay alert. Just be aware and allow your life to unfold. Even if it is unpleasant right now, trust that you are exactly where you need to be and that you don't need to do anything to figure something out, to make the next step happen. It will happen as long as you yourself are just at ease and alert here right now, just providing for the needs of this moment, doing what is required, whatever task is presenting itself. As long as you continue doing this, the journey will continue to unfold. Now, the next lesson is that this body is not you. Don't limit yourself to this body. Only when you limit yourself of what I am to this body is when the, even the topic of trust comes in. There are so many events, things, so many uh, occurrences happening within the body. But because you just consider this body to be me, you're not really concerned with all the events happening in your body. They just happen. And you just allow them to happen on their own. There's no fear even when you get sick. It just, you, you know it's going to be fine. You can, you'll heal and it happens. But because you consider the world to be outside of you, something other than you, every single event matters. You're not allowing just every single event to unfold and be what it is, but rather every single event matters and this and this and this. So realize that you do not end here. You do not end here. The universe, the world is your body. You are the world. The events and the happenings of the world move within you. This is the entire theme of this channel now, right? This is the th entire theme of this teaching is to recognize that you are not just this and you're not limited by this. You are that in which the world moves. And if you keep this perspective, then what is there to be scared of? Fear comes along with, I am this body and I need to preserve this and I need to make sure this one is okay. And I need to meet the needs of the body and do this and this and this. The needs of the body will be met. Don't worry about that but recognize that there is no need to fear the world. Once you start to create this sort of approach, you will start to even see your world itself become more harmonious. Okay, so recognize that you do not just end here. You are the world. And these, aren't, these can just be mere words, right? But have the, the courage to find these, the meaning of these words in meditation. Go beyond your mind because the mind is what paints you out to be this body. As long as you stay within mind, this is all you will know and these will just be words. You know, like we, we discussed a lot of personal examples in this video, but the personal examples don't matter. That's from the perspective of this person. It is only confusing that, oh my God, these things are happening and this, this is so unlikely from this person from so far away came to like, you know, whatever, into my experience. It is amazing from and miraculous from this personal point of view but from the world point of view the universal point of view it is just another occurrence you see so as long as you identify with this body and that's it you will always live in fear so go beyond it how by self-inquiry by meditation <laughs> so watch all the other videos on this channel and apply what you learn now the next um, 
lesson that I want to talk about is that even when you feel like you ventured off your path, you have not. You are still on the path. You're exactly where you are meant to be right now, no matter what that is, no matter how unpleasant it is, no matter how much you feel like you're not where you're meant to be. It is only your judgments, your resistance, your fighting against your current life that is keeping you stuck in it. If you want to rearrange your circumstances, if you want to live a more peaceful life, you have to go within. You have to find your own source. You have to dissolve this resistance. Recognize that you are always on the path. And because that is so, let go of all fear and anxiety. Give life the room to flow, the freedom to be and you will naturally be at ease. And recognize that things are beyond planning, okay? You can plan and you can do, have these little personal plans and of what you wish to do and everything, but don't be so stuck to these plans. Don't let these plans be everything you know. Don't be so attached to your desires and fears. Again, give life the freedom to move. Recognize that there is great freedom and excitement in the unplanned. And the more you try to standardize life and put it into plans, the more you will create resistances as well, which will then make you suffer. Because the more you want something so strongly, the more you resist it's opposite. So fine, have desires, want things, plan, but don't be so attached. Okay? The more you give life the freedom to flow and move and be, and the more you are at ease with yourself, all these next steps, all and trusting in life just becomes effortless. There's just freedom to be. And that inward freedom always expresses itself as external freedom as well. So again, the, the circumstantial evidence in this video is fine, but the lessons that we just discussed are most important. So all of these lessons will be uniquely relevant to your current experience, to the leaps of faith you need to take, to the things you need to do. So put them into practice. Be at ease here and now. And live life in acceptance. There's no need to suffer. Okay? So, again, meditation and self-inquiry are key here. From the ego perspective, you will always suffer. So if you want to, you know, make the shift from ego to actually living life from awareness, your true position, then watch my free one hour masterclass down below. Again, it's completely free and in it you will learn how to create this shift and how to actually practically on a day by day basis what to implement and how to start seeing what you truly are. Practice.